This twisted rectangle is inspired by another tutorial linked at the end, but I used a different workflow to solve it. Keyboard shortcuts are shown in the bottom left corner. We start by following Fusion's first rule, setting up a new activated component. This component is designed to stand on the ground, so it makes sense to place the first sketch on the flat horizontal construction plane. Positioning your design central over the origin is often beneficial, especially when working with patterns or revolving tools. For that reason, I'll use a center rectangle. The 100 by 100 mm size is just a choice I made. It won't affect the workflow if you use your own dimensions. Select the sketch and go straight into the extrude command. I'll set the height to 10 mm if you're following along with my dimensions. Next, create a new sketch on top of the body you just made. Use the two-point rectangle to sketch, starting from the edge of your geometry and working inward. This keeps things simple, but feel free to experiment with circles or polygons for a different look. Then, jump straight into the extrude command and give your new shape some height. I'm setting it to 50 mm since that's where I want the twist to begin, but you can adjust this based on your design. Just make sure to set the operation to new body so we can modify it independently later. Set up a new construction plane for the mirror command. I'm referencing the top of the geometry so it updates automatically if the base thickness changes. If you prefer a fixed distance, you can reference the horizontal construction plane at the bottom instead. We set up this construction plane to reuse the bodies we've already created. Select both objects before choosing the mirror plane and set the operation to new body. This saves time, improves quality by avoiding redundant modeling and keeps future updates simple, allowing you to adjust the model through the timeline with fewer inputs. We made the leg a separate body specifically for this move command. The main body is 100 mm wide and the leg is 10 mm wide. By grabbing the leg at its center and moving it 90 mm, we position it exactly where it needs to be. This step is essential for achieving the twisted look we are after. Turn off the visibility of the offset plane before moving on. Since we no longer need it, hiding it will give us a clearer view for the next steps. Your next task is to loft between the legs. Fusion offers multiple ways to do this, but for a smoother transition, change the profile setting from connected to G2 curvature. G2 curvature ensures a seamless flow between surfaces by maintaining both tangent direction and matching curvature at the junction. This results in a visually smooth and aesthetically refined transition, ideal for organic shapes, rounded corners and professional grade designs. Now we'll reuse this twisted shape and distribute it around the model using a circular pattern. Our object is easy to work with since it isn't joined to the base or top and selecting the axis is simple because our design is symmetric around the central axis at the origin. Setting the quantity to 4 and distributing it evenly around the axis ensures everything aligns perfectly. A quick quality check using the view cube confirms that everything looks good. It's a good idea to combine the bodies before applying fillets for smoother corners. This ensures we don't fillet the twisted legs as individual pieces, which could create unwanted geometry where the legs meet the top and the bottom. For the combined workflow, Simply pick a target body and then select all the tool bodies. We don't need to keep the tools since we can modify the individual parts through the timeline. Our new body will appear in the project browser and the other bodies will be removed. When applying the fillet, we can select everything in one move to round the corners efficiently. 
Drag from the top left to the right to select everything you completely cover. Dragging from the right to the left selects everything you touch. We are using a simple 1mm fillet here, which is sufficient for this tutorial, but be sure to check out my linked video on fillets at the end for more examples. I'm selecting a glossy yellow appearance and applying it to the entire body for this tutorial since it costs nice reflections. If you want to learn about custom appearances, check out the video with a 3D printed lampshade in my Fusion library. Everything looks good, so we can move on to the render workspace, which you'll find in the workspace picker in the top left corner. Be sure to save your project before rendering and feel free to add a version description if that's helpful. I recommend using a mouse with a scroll wheel. I press and hold the scroll wheel to pan around and reorient the model for my upcoming rendering. You can see how the perspective changes with different positions. The origin isn't needed, so we'll just turn off its visibility. You can find the scene settings via the right-click menu. One of the major changes I always make is selecting whether to render with a solid color background or an environment. Head to the render settings after finalizing your object's positioning and scene setup. You can choose between in canvas and cloud rendering. I'll use cloud rendering in this Fusion tutorial to take advantage of powerful computing resources. You have various settings at your disposal, including presets for image sizes and the option to add custom dimensions. Useful for specific purposes like a website, YouTube video or brochure. I'll set the resolution to 1920 by 1080. The estimated render queue time is 20 minutes, but in my experience, cloud renderings often finish faster. The latest version of your design is saved before the cloud rendering begins. Your render appears in the rendering gallery and the green symbol indicates it's still in progress. A useful tip is to start multiple renderings at once. Since the project was already saved before the first rendering, there's no need to save it again, allowing each new render to start instantly. For this project, I launched three renderings to test different images for a YouTube thumbnail. Once they're finished, I can easily click on them and download the files. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. If you're looking for more inspiration, check out the video on creating a twisted rectangle. It inspired this project and approached the task with a different workflow. And if you want to learn more about fillets, don't miss my video on 5 facts about them. Thanks for watching and see you in the next project.